So Rebecca and Holly, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, I just want to invite you to share a little bit about your project today because I know we want to let other people know what you're working on. It's very important. Great, thanks. Well, we we have begun the Ancient Graffiti Project. Uh, we started last summer with a first field season in Herculaneum, Italy, and the main goals of the project are, number one, to provide training um, to students and professors so that people uh, um, learn about ancient graffiti and what these are are handwritten inscriptions from the first century AD that have survived on the plaster of the walls. They're a very unique set of, uh, of inscriptions and of text and evidence because they were written by the man on the street who just had something sharp and maybe wanted to write his name or write a message to a friend. Um, and, and so they have all sorts of unique uh, issues with it where sometimes we have non-standard spellings uh, and we have abbreviations. Um, we have uh, wonderful ways to say good luck to you. Um, so the first, the first aim is to, is to help people understand um, how to study and how to use these inscriptions. And then the second major aim is making this type of evidence um, accessible to a larger public, both to scholars and to uh, interested members of the public, because there are some really fascinating insights into Roman life and culture uh, in these largely neglected um, individual writings. So one of the aspects of the project is to contribute to online resources, databases that are used primarily by scholars and students um, who already know Latin, but the Ancient Graffiti Project also has its own which will have a searchable database of graffiti where everything will be translated for uh, a student into English. So this really uh, allows a, a wider audience to have access to this material. And so we, we began on site uh, with a, a pilot field season last summer in uh, June 2014, uh, and we went on site in Herculaneum, Italy, uh, with a team of, of 30 undergrads, graduate students, postdocs, and professors to survey the site and document and record um, everything that we could about the graffiti that were still extant and still preserved in situ. Um, and what we're now doing is we're contributing to several digital humanities initiatives uh, that will now incorporate the material from Herculaneum and um, into their larger projects. Um, such as the epigraphic database Roma, whose aim is to um, to provide a re-edition of all the inscriptions from peninsular peninsular Italy um, from the from classical antiquity, and they also contribute to the larger coalition of Eagle, the European network of uh, of um, ancient Greek and Latin epigraphy. Uh, so we have. We have and we have made and we are making contributions to both of those projects. Part of this is that students are directly involved in the research, um, both last summer in Italy in Herculaneum in our field season, as well as throughout the academic year, creating entries for EDR and for Eagle. How uh, how do you train the students and faculty who participate in the project? Do you have any workshops coming up? We do, we do, and we're very excited and we're very happy about it that in summer 2015 we have a training workshop uh, the first week of August at the Center for Hellenic Studies. And we will have a special focus on the Greek graffiti from Pompeii and Herculaneum. So we'll be looking at actually both graffiti that are written in Greek and bilingual graffiti because there are examples where um, someone is writing a Greek word in Latin letters or someone is uh, writing a message that they put both the Greek and Latin alphabet in addition to the straight out Greek graffiti. So we really are excited uh, for this opportunity to use the wonderful resources of the Center for Atlantic Studies and we're very grateful to the staff and especially Greg, Greg Nagy, who's extended this invitation but we're also really looking forward to um, inviting more um, 
members to be a part of the team, a part of the project, um, getting some training and, and continuing the project. So do you have any, uh, any way of putting your data or your findings online? Yes, indeed. So we're contributing to these two other projects, but the, the basis of our project is available at ancientgraffiti.wlu.edu. It provides an overview to the project. It provides a, a summary of our inaugural field season in Herculaneum, and it shows a prototype for our search engine that allows you to search graffiti in several different ways. So if you want to if you want to see how many graffiti showed up in a particular house or in the category of workshops, uh, you, can, you can search and get a return of all of those graffiti in addition to doing textual searches and searching by categories for drawings. One of the great things about this particular website and the Ancient Graffiti Project is again that it's uh, designed for a variety of users from scholars to students so that uh, you don't have to know, for example, the particular number of an inscription in order to be able to find graffiti on a particular topic or of a particular type. And we've been working with our students to develop tags for the graffiti and by having the end user involved in the process of developing the website, we hope it will be much more useful to a range of individuals who are interested in ancient graffiti. Yeah, and we're also designing ways to make it easier to browse graffiti. Uh, so if you don't know what you're looking for, but you say, well, I'm really interested in public buildings. I wonder what kind of writings may have shown up on the walls there. You can browse for uh, what shows up in public buildings. Or if you're really interested in what sort of animals uh, ancient Pompeians or Herculaneans might like to draw, um, you, can, you can browse the category of animals and see what sort of returns you get. I'll just tell you, a camel was a favorite. Um, I, I actually have another question. Um, so you mentioned that you have students tagging, uh, tagging these graffiti. Are these undergraduates? Are they graduate students? Uh, what, what, what type of people work on these projects with you? Well, both. So last summer in the, in the inaugural field season, we had um, full professors, we had undergraduates and graduate students all working together. And the um, gr graduate students have continued to work on the project as well as undergraduates under the supervision of faculty mentors. And it's been an amazing opportunity for us. I have uh, one student working with me, actually two students working with me right now, and I took three last summer. And it's an, a wonderful opportunity for students who are studying Latin, the language, to have a field research experience and also independent research experience in the Digital Humanities Project. And it's really nice also that um, it, it means the project continues during the year. So it's not just a one summer field season return home. Um, we've uh, with the undergrads who have been working especially on designing these tags and the um, search um, process for, for these drawings, we've been meeting every other week for Google Hangout sessions. Um, and so we've had three campuses coming together and talking about these things. Uh, we also had, we had a really great really great team last summer and so on our website you can see the presentations that um, both professors and undergrads have given this fall um, talking about what they learned from the project. Uh, so, so Rebecca, which, uh, which institutions are you collaborating with? Well, the main collaboration um, is between Washington and Lee University, Millsaps College, and the University of Richmond. Those are the three institutions where we've been meeting on a biweekly basis. Um, and that's also because this project was initially funded with a grant from the Associated Colleges of the South. But we also have collaborators who are continuing to work with us at the University of Texas, at the University of Cincinnati, and at Lund University in Sweden. And we are looking forward to our team expanding this summer. Beautiful. Holly and Rebecca, thank you so much for coming uh, to meet with us today to talk about your project. Ali and Lana, thank you so much for joining us and for the beautiful question. We look forward to hearing more from, from everyone about this project in the days to come.
It was our treat. Thank you so much for having us, Claudia. Thank you.